James on this gorgeous Independence Day weekend Sunday as we gather in this incredible time and space with our friends the birds. See the magpie up there who joined us. Uh, and, and as we gather in this space to celebrate God's blessings in our lives. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And bless you, God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty oh, God, God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Let us cause us our hearts by the visitation of your Holy Spirit, and that we may perfectly love you, and that we may magnify your holy name. We for Christ's sake. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, you have made of all peoples of the earth, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory, to serve you in freedom and peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and a strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. <coughs> a reading from Deuteronomy. The Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. Him alone you shall worship. To him you shall hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. We'll read Psalm 145, alternating at the whole verse. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and bless your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise the Lord's and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall see the mind of the Lord's and all the They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious, the Lord is The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. Romans. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Here with the Spirit is saying to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you only greet your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Would you all please be seated? Maybe if I stand back a little bit of it, it won't quite be back quite so badly. <clears throat> Earlier this week, Sylvia and I decided to take a little road trip around this part of Montana. There is perhaps no better time to get out and see this great state of ours than during these long, early summer days. So we hopped in our car on Tuesday morning, and after 10 hours and 250 miles, Sylvia and I had first headed out past Four Corners until we got to the Madison River and then turned north until we got up to the Madison River Buffalo Jump. Then we went on from there up to the Missouri Headwaters State Park. And then we went back to Three Forks for lunch, and then on to Willow Creek, and then south as far as Ennis, and then west to Twin Bridges, and then north to Whitehall, and then finally along the old highway past Lewis and Clark Caverns, until we ended up back here in town. It was a glorious day. We did, however, make one little unexpected side trip along the way. When we left the Missouri Headwaters State Park, we headed north about 10 miles until we got to the little town of Clarkston, Montana. Now, some of you may never have heard of Clarkston, Montana. Certainly, I never had. But it was on the map, and there was a paved road that got there, so we figured, what the heck, we should check it out. Let's just say that both figuratively and literally, Clarkston, Montana is at the end of the road. <laughs> and the scattering of houses there seem to be occupied by folks who seem to live quite happily as far away from the mainstream as possible. It was just one week before Independence Day when we were there, so it wasn't surprising to see that lots of the houses had flags flying out in front. But as we started to pay a little closer attention, we discovered that many of those flags were that yellow, don't tread on me flag with the coiled snake. And some of those flags had some kind of a neo-Nazi or white supremacist logo on them. And almost every single American flag that was flying had been deliberately hung upside down. As a statement, of course, an act of rebellion, making uh, their, their opinion known that they believe our nation to be in some kind of great distress. Well, soon we came upon a sign along the side of the road that said, Road closed, no trespassing. And even though it was clearly still the county road, it seemed like the better part of valor to go no further. So we did our best to turn our car around in the middle of the road, you know, the one with the California license plates, <laughs> and to head back toward friendlier surroundings. I've come to believe, though, that the people of Clarkston, Montana, are not all that atypical. There are people all across the country, many of whom live right here in Montana, who have embraced a kind of me-against-the-world mentality that somehow thinks that the patriotic way to be a real American is to defy authority, to reject the common good, to embrace isolationism, to believe that my way is the only way that any other opinion is a direct affront to my personal freedoms and liberty. 
now that we're in fireworks season. The local news was interviewing one owner of a fireworks stand a couple of nights ago and asking him what he thought about the ban on fireworks within the city limits of Bozeman this year. He said he wasn't concerned because in his own words, patriots are gonna take a stand and make their voices heard and set off their fireworks wherever they darn well pleased. Lots, for lots of folks, the attitudes of the people who live in Clarkston or the rhetoric of the fireworks seller right here in the Dalton Valley sum up what it means to be a true American. The sentiment seems to be the Declaration of Independence gives me the right to do whatever I want with no responsibility for the common good. That's what independence is all about. Unfortunately, people who harbor such beliefs probably haven't read the Declaration of Independence lately. In fact, especially as we celebrate our Independence Day weekend here, if you haven't read the Declaration of Independence Day, Independence lately either, I'd encourage you to do so. It's easily available online and will take about five or 10 minutes to get through the entire document. One of the most striking elements of the Declaration of Independence is that while it spells out a compelling argument with an exhaustive list of reasons why all of the fledgling colonies should have the right to separate themselves from Great Britain, it ends on a very different note. The last line of the Declaration of Independence reads as follows. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine <laughs> providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. After all of this talk of independence, our nation's founders recognized that in the end they were utterly dependent. Dependent upon God's providence and protection and dependent upon one another for the success of this new venture on which they were about to embark. This notion of independence nowadays, at least as it has been promulgated by so many self-proclaimed patriots and pundits and politicians and even preachers to this day, that it is somehow a God-given right that as individuals and as a nation, we should be totally free from the responsibility of being connected to anyone or anything other than ourselves, simply flies in the face both of good politics and of good theology. Today's scriptures are a telling example. From Deuteronomy, we heard these words, you shall love the stranger and you shall fear the Lord your God. From Romans, owe no one anything except to love one another. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then finally, from Matthew's Gospel, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The message is consistent and the message is clear. There is no doubt that the expectation of living the Christian life is that we do so together. That we are inextricably linked one to the other acquaintances and strangers, friends and enemies. That the only way to live a life of faith is to do so in relation with one another. And I think that same holds true for our civic life as well. The idea that the United States should be independent, as in not dependent, in our relationships with other countries around the world is simply absurd. We care about a war in Ukraine that has claimed over half a million lives. We care about the fact that a migrant boat sunk two weeks ago off the coast of Greece, killing hundreds of people. 
We care that there are over 500 active fires in California, not just because the smoke comes our way, but because thousands of Canadian residents have been displaced. And closer to home, we care because there have been over 300 mass shootings in the United States just since the beginning of the year. One in Baltimore just last night. And we care not just because those are stories about nameless and faceless people who live a long way away from us, but because each one of those people, like each one of us, is a beloved child of God. There is perhaps no more ubiquitous image associated with the 4th of July than the Statue of Liberty. You'll see it represented on everything from patriotic public service announcements to insurance company commercials to advertisements for beds and mattresses. That statue in New York Harbor has for the past 137 years served as an evangelist of sorts, drawing people to our shores and to all the possibilities that lie therein. Lady Liberty, as she is affectionately known, is instantly recognizable. So too are the words inscribed on her base from the poet Emma Lazarus. Those words go like this. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame with conquering limbs astride from land to land. Here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name, Mother of Exiles. Her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep ancient lands your storied pomp, cries she with silent lips. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Send these the homeless tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. The Declaration of Independence, which was ratified on July 4th, 1776, set the stage for this nascent country of ours, which hoped to live into the ideals which that declaration espoused. Neither the country nor our democracy emerged fully formed in 1776. And we've been working on both of them ever since. Some days we've done it quite well. And some days, honestly, we've done it rather poorly. But every day, we've done it with the common goal of striving to live into the words of our forebears who committed themselves to a life together with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence as we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Not that we have completed that task, but that with each rising of the sun, we are striving to achieve that goal. Each day we have the opportunity be, to become more the nation which our founders envisioned us becoming. Every day we can live more into the words inscribed onto the base of the Statue of Liberty. Every day we can inch our way forward toward a world which will execute justice for the orphan and the widow, which will love the stranger, which will love our neighbors as ourselves. We're not there yet, but we are on the journey. It is certainly not my place today 
to stand before you on this Independence Day weekend and encourage you to be more patriotic. Primarily because, based on my experiences earlier this week, I don't think we could get very far in agreeing what it means to be patriotic in the first place. But it is very much my intention and my desire to stand before you this day and encourage you to be more Christ-like. And it is very much my prayer on this 4th of July weekend that this country that I love so dearly might continue to live each day in a more Christ-like manner as well. This isn't just the work that God has set before me. This isn't just the work that God has set before you. This is the work that God has set before all of us. May we receive God's blessing that we might become God's blessing as we stand next to the lady in the harbor as she lifts her lamp beside the golden door. to stand as you are able as we say together the words of the Nicene Creed on page 5. We believe in one God. who inhabited this land for generation upon generation. For immigrants from every part of the globe, many who came by their own choice and many who came against their will, who have brought their very gifts to enrich our lives and deepen our appreciation of our many blessings. For patriots who dreamed of and fought for a free nation. For the men and women who laid the foundation of our democracy and who pledged liberty and justice for all. We thank you, Lord. For those who built this country brick by brick, road by road, and town by town. We thank you, Lord. For the brave soldiers who have fought for our country, for all who paid for our freedom by their service, and those who paid by their sacrifice. We thank you, Lord. For the innovators and artists, poets and teachers, farmers and factory workers, for all who labor and provide for the common good. For this land with its peaks and valleys, coastal deserts, fields and meadows. 
for our own community, for those who came before us in this place, and for our neighbors near and far. Amen. Lord, we pray for the United States that we might always be a nation which defends and promotes liberty and freedom and justice. Amen. That we might always be a nation where all are free to worship and pray. Amen. That we might be a beacon of freedom to all those who live under the shadow of terror and hopelessness. Amen. That those who are elected to govern and lead would be guided by you and be ever aware of the trust that has been given them. Amen. That we would be a people who repent from our sins and who always return to you and to your grace. Amen. Gracious God, bless and defend us and our land. Prosper the work of our hands and increase in us your grace and compassion and our offerings of thanks to you, our rock and our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Please greet those around you in Christ. Come on. Peace be with you, Ray. Peace with you. Peace the Lord. How are you? Good morning, everyone. And welcome on this 4th of July almost weekend. <laughs> um, there are a couple of announcements for the good of the order today, but first, a welcome to all of you who are here today and all of you who will be with us over the next several days as this gets posted online. We're glad that you could be a part of these festivities today. Those of you who haven't been here in a while, we are so blessed to have you back. There are a couple of announcements. You should have received in your in your email an announce a, a, a newsletter from us that is chock full of announcements, important announcements. Hopefully you all received that. If you did not, let Bob or me know today that you're still not receiving the newsletter. We want to make sure you get that. What it says, if you have not yet read it, and please do go home and read it if you haven't, is that beginning next Sunday, we will be having two services at St. James. And the whole story of that is in there, but what you need to know today is there will be a 9 o'clock service that will be organ and choir on the Sundays, the choir, well, I, I should take that back. There will be a 9 o'clock service with the pop-up choir every week for the summer. And then when fall comes, it'll be every other week with the regular choir. But for the summer, pop-up choir at 9 and 10.30. The Abba folks will be there some Sundays, and the other Sundays, Connie will doing, be doing it all on piano with whoever she talks into helping her out. <laughs> if, um, if you have a hammer and you'd like to play it with Connie at the light service, she sure could use the help, so please talk to her about that. <coughs> so um, that's in there. There's some other announcements in there that, for the good of the order that we um, hope you'll take the time to read. Um, I know Brad has an announcement. Where are you, Brad? 
should be a mic right there to work for you. We've got tables and uh, goodies over here to the to the side, and as uh, Sylvia just said, with two services, we've thought about and talked about how best uh, to work this. But my thought is uh, that maybe the best way to start is to have a coffee hour in between the services and see what we can do with that so that we can get people together again. Uh, that would be a good thing because with two services, people are going to be making their choice. So uh, those that want to come to the 1030, come a little early. Uh, try that and see how it works and we'll see how it goes. That way all of us can, can probably uh, work a little bit better on that portion uh, of our gathering. So uh, let's try that and see what happens with that. Uh, I'm looking forward to the two different services. It's going to be good. Uh, we're also looking forward. I'll let you all know, sadly, we're going to lose Bob and Sylvia the end of August, but it looks like we will have uh, a second and incoming uh, interim rector. Uh, I can't say any more than that right now, but I will announce it as soon as I can or as soon as uh, the vestry looks at it and we can go forward with that. Uh, that's, that's all I've got. I hope uh, this is a wonderful service this morning. And Bob, thank you so much for, for a wonderful uh, sermon uh, that makes us all, I think, reflect on, on how we have been blessed by this country and everything else. Thank you. So to clarify just a little bit, if you want to see everybody, you might want to come early because then you'll, if you're a 1030, you'll catch the 9 o'clockers. If you're a 9 o'clocker, you might catch some of the 1030 folks. But the plan is to have coffee hour after both the 9 o'clock and the 1030 service so people can gather. Okay, so plan on that. Um, unless the weather brings us outside, we'll be downstairs. But where are we today? For coffee hour. It's outside. <laughs> we have a community prayer for our next rector, if we can say that together. Gracious God, we pray for the guidance of your Holy Spirit as we seek a new rector for our congregation. We know our needs and the tasks that lies ahead of us. Direct our search committee and in their efforts. We give them the insight to receive the leader you would choose for us. Holy God, we pray for unity, spiritual strength, wisdom, and endurance as we set us on our task. Or help us to have patience with one another and to above all show mutual love and respect to each other during this process. And now, are there any birthdays or anniversaries or traveling mercies today? sponsored by St. James, is taking a five-day canoe trip on the Missouri River. We start on the 5th and end on the 10th, and we would like your prayers for great weather and everybody coming out with no sunburns and lots of fun. <laughs> my name is Amy Ross, and my birthday's coming up. 
I will be four score and three on the fourth. <laughs> Hello, I'm Dick Norman, and Thursday I was one day older. <laughs> I'm Judy Farrington. Next Saturday I will drive to Flathead Lake and work as the campus nurse for um, Camp Marshall next week. I'm Kaylin Miller. This is my husband, Mike, and we were married 40 years ago today here at St. James. I'm just really happy to be celebrating. I'm Sharon Eversman. My son and grandson are, as we speak, motoring across South Dakota from St. Louis and Wisconsin and Minnesota. And hopefully they'll be here tomorrow after driving across Montana. And so for birthdays, for traveling mercies, for big, glorious anniversaries, we give you thanks. Together, let us pray the prayer. Lord God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger. Keep them safe from the knowledge of your love. This is
at the sign of the rainbow, your promise over the waters of the flood. You brought your people through the Red Sea and quenched our thirst in the wilderness with water from the rock. You sweetened the bitter water of our journey with your abiding presence and brought us across the Jordan into the land of promise. We failed continually to acknowledge your gifts to us. We chose purity over justice, prosperity over mercy, arrogance over humility. Yet your care for us never failed. In your good time, you sent Jesus to open our eyes, release us from captivity, and preach good news by the power of your spirit. In him, your law for us became flesh. In him, you renewed your call to us to love God and our neighbor. He was baptized by John in the Jordan, offered himself as living water to all who thirst, and transformed our daily lives into the wine of celebration. On the night before he died for us, Jesus sat at table with his friends. He took the bread, gave it to them, broke it, and shared it with them, saying, Take it. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave you thanks, and shared it with them, saying, Remembering his love for us, his labor to give us new life, and his defeat of death, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Now, Creator God, breathe your spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the food and drink of new life, Christ's body and blood given for us. Through Christ our Savior, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we give you glory and praise, Creator God, now and forever. Amen. Now, let us pray in the prayer language of our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thank you. 
together. Gracious God, you have accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who created us for love, dwell in you. May God, who created us for liberty, set you free from every bond, save you for the tie that binds us together. May God, who gave us the gift of one another, bless us with the spirit of unity, the bond of peace, and the will to continue the grand experiment of this nation. And may the blessing of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Exactly. 